I don't know, be, I'm gonna be smart as hell to have read in about a week or two. But I learned how to share my screen. Listen, I'm gonna talk to you about faith for your assignment, faith to carry out that which God has called you to do, faith to carry out that which God has called you to do. Amen. And uh, that's really where I wanted to be with you all tonight. Uh, let me pray. Father, we thank you now for this time that we share with you, with the people of God, the word of God. We ask God that you would speak to us and then through us and cause God hearts to be encouraged and, and cause them, God, to have a hunger for the word. Be inquisitive, be curious about your word, God, how they might operate in it, live in it, God, how they might allow it to fill them. And so, God, I ask you to bless them now. Bless each one of us, even as we gather this of your words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to God. Faith. Glory to God. Faith. In the Greek, it is a noun. It's, the word is pistis, and uh, as a verb, it's, it's pistio. Um, and it's complete trust confidence or assurance in someone or something similar or synonyms are trust, belief, confidence, conviction, credence, and reliance. How many wave your hand out of y'all that's relying on the law? You're just relying on the law. You, you, you're trusting him. You have confidence in God. Glory to God. You made up your mind that God can do anything but faith. Glory to God. That God is the strength of your life. And so we talk about faith and what it is. And I wanted to read Hebrew 1 because this is called the hall of faith. Sunday morning, you know, the Lamb had preached about where is your faith. For those of you who go back and kind of listen to that, he preached about it at the 8 o'clock service. Where is your faith? Glory to God. And that caught the attention of everybody there and indeed minister. Green talked about it last night. The topic for the men in the man cave was faith. Glory to God. Faith. And all of the men began to talk about what faith meant to them and glory to God, how faith impacts their lives. And, and I want us to consider it. It, it we ought to we ought to meditate on this. We ought to deal with it. Our strength is in the word of God. And when God gives us something in his word, it is strong enough to hold us up. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. It's solid enough to stand on the word of the Lord. When God says it, I know we used to have this song. Y'all remember that song? God said it. I believe it. God said it. I'm going to. Well, listen, I want to tell you this. If God said it, you whether you believe it or not, that's the way it is. Whether you believe it or not, I don't know who wrote that song, and I ain't knocking them. Glory to God. Thank you for your, amen, your artistic uh endeavor but the fact of the matter is if god says it it is settled amen and so god's word is settled in heaven and settled in the earth and so as we begin to look at uh this portion of scripture in hebrew the hall of faith hebrews 11 i'm just going to read a few verses and i just need a couple of people to read this somebody to read one through uh four and somebody one through three and the other person to read four five and six glory to god uh, so I just need a couple of hands. Uh, there you go. Sister Gina's one. Glory to God. I need one more hand. One more hand. Glory to God. There you go. Uh, Sister Beverly. Glory to God. Come on. You all read Sister Gina and then Sister Beverly. Now read it like Jesus wrote it with your name on it. Absolutely. Now faith is the assurance, title, deed, confirmation of things hoped for divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith, compre faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Stop right there. Mine was powerful right there. I need you to say that one more time. <laughs> okay. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Second verse. For by this kind of faith, the men of old gain divine approval. 
third verse. By faith, that is what is an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the world's universe ages were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Wow, that's powerful, y'all. That's powerful. Absolutely. Uh, Sister Beverly, I'm going to come to you in just a second. You be just be ready. But listen, let me tell you something. This scripture lets us know, glory to God, that whether you see it or not, it is so by faith. Faith is what holds us up. Our trust and belief in the word of God, that faith, glory to God, amen, holds. In fact, things that are seen were made by things that were not seen. And God said, let there be. And it was. Amen. Glory to God. Yee! That's powerful. Amen. Somebody ought to just throw a heart or a hand up. That's powerful. God said, let there be. And it was. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, Sister Beverly. Four through six. Starting at the fourth chapter, the first verse. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which it was testified of him that he was righteous upright in right standing with God and God testified by accepting his gifts and though he and though he died yet through this act of faith he still speaks five by faith that pleased God Enoch was caught up and taken into heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death and he was not found because God had taken him for, and he was not found because God had taken him for even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony still on record that he had walked with God and pleased him, but without faith, it is Ooh. impossible without faith. It is impossible to walk with God and please him. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe, necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. Glory to God. Listen, I need to ask you, where is your faith? Glory to God. Every one of us must consider, ask ourselves, and you, your faith is challenged Glory to God when you go through stuff. Glory to God when you don't understand what just happened or what, look, what looks like is going to happen. Your faith is challenged, glory to God, when it becomes dark in the middle of your day. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God when your situation shifts before you had a chance to adjust to it. Glory to God. That's when our faith stands up. Our faith that even though it shifted on us, God knew exactly where it was going. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. And since God knew exactly where it was going and I'm in God, I'm going to be all right. It's going to work in my favor. It's going to work for my good. Glory to God. Let me talk to somebody. This is where we are. Glory to God. As it talks about faith, talks about faith. Living faith demands room to grow. Living faith demands room to grow. Glory. When you've got anything that Glory to God is alive, it grows. Anything that's alive, it shifts and changes. Glory to God. Can I talk to somebody? But if it's dead, it begins to dwindle. It becomes less and less. But living faith, if you got a faith that's alive, it demands room. Glory to God. Uh, Jude 1 and 20 said, Beloved, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, how? Praying in the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. You building yourself up. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And let me just, just, just say this so that you all understand. That praying in the Holy Ghost is praying, glory to God, in tongues. So your, your natural mind does not necessarily understand because the spirit of God is praying, glory to God, that which you might not even understand. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will reveal to you, glory to God, what you prayed for. 
glory to God. But other times it's praying in, in an area where you might not be able to pray. What God's got to pray for you on this situation, you might not know because you might not be able to handle it right now. But he makes, glory to God, for in, in, uh, intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You can't say the word, but the Holy Ghost is speaking on your behalf. Can I talk to somebody? And if you have any questions about what we're talking about, just raise your hand. We're going to talk about it because we want us to be clear about our relationship with God. We want to be clear, glory to God. We don't want to walk out of here uh, unsure. Well, I didn't want to ask that question because, you know, I didn't want to seem like I, no, listen, if you got a question, ask it because somebody else is probably thinking the same thing. Can I talk to somebody? Listen, that's, this is Bible study. This is what it's all about. And I need somebody to read from a second Peter, glory to God, one, four through eight. This is up talking about living faith demands room to grow. Somebody read that for me. Who's reading? Glory to God. Who's reading that scripture? I can read. I can read. Go ahead, Bishop. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Bridget. Good evening. Whereby Second Peter. One four three, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they, may, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ye, this is powerful. Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Somebody ought to be glad about the promises God has placed in your life, God, exceeding great and precious promises, huh? that by these you might part be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Glory to God. You saved now. Somebody put in a chat box, I'm saved now. Glory to God. I'm saved now. Glory to God. And then uh, he says to us that we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But then we get to this part, this growing part. Now you've got faith, but you can't stand on just the faith that was saving faith. Glory to God. You need to add, mature your faith. Somebody put in the chat box, mature your faith, grow my faith. I've got to grow my faith. Glory to God. When I go through a difficult situation, it ought not run me away, but it ought to make me stronger about what I'm going to deal with. It ought to give me greater confidence in what God is doing in my life. Can I talk to somebody? That's where you've got to be, where you've got to understand. Glory to God. And he says to us, uh, let me let me say, I want to read this in the Amplified Version. Glory to God. Um, what he puts down here. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He says, glory to God. Well, let me read it right here first. Oh, here we go. For this reason, applying your all your diligence to the divine principles, make every effort in exercising to your faith, develop moral excellence. Develop moral excellence. All right. Just because other folks are doing don't mean you do. Develop moral excellence. And in moral excellence, knowledge insight, understanding, and in your knowledge, self-control. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about when I say self-control, because sometimes we we kind of drift back and forth and we say, say, you know, I shouldn't have said that, but glory to God, self-control. I need to not be in the presence of that situation because that's not healthy for me. Can I talk to someone? 
that's not healthy for me. That does not edify my spirit. And so when we grow in God, we realize, glory to God, that some things we need to just avoid. Might be popular, but it ain't for me. Self-control. And in your self-control, steadfastness. And in your steadfastness, godliness. Verse number seven. And in your godliness, brotherly affection. And in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love. That is, that is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for their benefit. It ain't all about me. Glory to God. It ain't all about what I think and what I want. Glory to God. Well, listen, I didn't get nothing out of that. Right, I understand, but God got the glory. You bless them, but God got the glory. And understand, as much as you bless them, God's going to return to you even greater measure because you sowed seeds, God's going to give you the harvest. Remember this, glory to God. The harvest is always greater than the seed. The harvest is greater than the seed. And so whatever it is you sow, whether good or bad, whatever it is you sow, when it comes back, it's going to be greater. And you might not reap where you sowed, but you will reap what you sowed. Everybody got that one? You might not reap where you sowed, but you real, will reap what you sowed. You might have been kind to somebody, went out of your way to bless them, glory to God, and you did good for them. Well, they might not have the ability or opportunity to return to you what you gave to them. But God will make it so that somebody else who has what you need will pour into your life. Because God was, his word is sure, it's true, it's a promise. Whatsoever a man or woman soweth, that shall they also reap. Am I talking to somebody today? I know we talk about that at offering time, but this is not just money he's talking about. This is our life. And so we need to look from that perspective that our faith grows. When it develops and it is mature and it has temperance and it has patience and there's godliness about it, we become much more solid and mature in the way we live our lives. Amen. Everything don't shake us. Glory to God. We get a minute to glory to God to say, you know, this ain't going well right now, but just hang in. It's going to be all right. Just hang in there. It's going to be all right. Listen, outside right now, it's raining hard. Glory to God. We're in a season of rain. We're in a season of downpour. But just hang in there. Glory to God. Because it's going to warm up one day. Amen. The sun's going to be out. Amen. Am I talking to anybody? Glory to God. That's the way it is. And uh, first natural and then spiritual. Just as it is in the natural, it is in spiritual. Glory to God. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is that there is an inevitable challenge to your faith. How many know your faith going to get challenged? The enemy going to try and get you to step outside of the will of God. So you going to believe God for a circumstance and it don't happen the way you expected or you felt you needed it to happen. There is going to be a challenge to your faith. Somebody put in the chat box, where is your faith? Put it in there. Where is your faith? Your faith is, there's an inevitable challenge to your faith. The challenge to your faith is essential for you to know your own commitment. You have no idea what you can handle or how much strength and conviction you have until you are challenged. You don't know. God knows what you can handle. And what you can deal with, that's why he can promise you he'll not put more on you than you're able to bear. And even with that temptation, glory to God, he's going to make a way of, of escape so you'll be able to bear it. But you've got to understand it. And it, this doesn't, this doesn't uh, affect you so heavily until it is something difficult to deal with. What's difficult for somebody else might not be an issue for you. But when you come against the thing or when that thing that's against you rises up, you still have to have faith. Can I talk to somebody? You've got to have faith to stand firm. It might be that you, uh, when you go out to lunch with those co-workers and they start drinking, glory to God, you uh, don't, it doesn't bother you. Ain't no issue for me. We good. 
Glory to God. But for somebody else, it might be a serious challenge. They sitting there and their mouth watering. Glory to God. But then their faith kicks in and they say, God, thank you for the strength. Glory to God. Thank you for what you are giving me now. And it might just be the Bible says, flee youthful lust. It might just be that you said, in order to be able to be strong in the Lord in this situation, your faith might command, listen, I need to. Let me, y'all, I've got to, I've got to go. I got some things I got to get taken care of. And I enjoyed this lunch with you all, but I've got to move on right now so that you escape that situation so that you don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Do you hear me? Glory to God. It might just be that you can't keep talking to that young lady. Glory to God, because that takes you to a place that's not good for your spiritual walk. It might just be that that particular brother is not a person you need to spend time with because they like to do things that you're not interested in doing. They, they, their conversation or behavior, their lifestyle is not conducive to growth for you. And so there's going to be a challenge. But the challenge is not so God will know what you can handle because he already knows the challenge is for you to know just how strong you are in the Lord. <laughs> just how strong you are. Just how much God you have. Just how much faith you have. Just how much strength, how stable you are in your walk. Glory to God. Somebody read this verse for me. Sister would like to read. There you go. Come on. Come on and read. On the screen. Do not, therefore, bring away your fearless confidence, for it has a glorious and a great reward. Incidentally, y'all, put down Hebrews 10 35. That's what that is. I didn't put it on the paper, but I, that's one of my favorite. One of my one of my go to scriptures. So Hebrews 10, 35. Go ahead. Read it again. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. Go ahead. Fearless confidence. For it has a glorious and a great reward. For you have need a patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances. Circumstances. Without, uh huh. Without. Com compromising without compromising bear up under difficult so that, circumstances without compromising uh-huh go ahead so that when you have carried or out the will of god you may receive and enjoy the full of what is promised but yet is in a very little while he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one is the one justified by faith, shall live by faith, respecting a man's relationship to God and trusting in him. And if he draws back, shrinking in fear, but so has no delight in him. Come on, y'all. But therefore, but do not therefore fling away. Hebrews 10, 35, you read it in, in the uh, King James Version, it says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Do not fling away your fearless confidence, for it has glorious and great reward. Other says recompense of reward, but that's what it's talking about. For you have need of patience, endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising listen you got to understand you got to stand fast in the liberty where christ has made us free and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage somebody put in the chat box don't go back don't go back don't compromise don't take on stuff to see, you know, sometimes when we were little, 
folks would talk us into doing stuff that was a challenging thing. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. And you end up uh, getting yourself into trouble. Amen. Because you went further than you were able when you went to the unnecessary. It was unnecessary. And many times the enemy just wants you to do just that the unnecessary, which ends up becoming harmful. And let me just tell you something else. A lot of saints, glory to God, are doing some things, and because God has not chastised them, they keep doing it. <laughs> they keep doing them because they ain't got a whooping yet. Can I talk to somebody? Because we ain't got a whooping, we just keep doing it. And glory to God. Well, it feels good now, so I just keep going doing it. Keep going doing it. No, no, no. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Because his spirit won't strive with us always. Glory to God. You got to know that God is patient towards us. But there's going to be a time when God's going to call us to account for the things we've done in this body. The deeds done in his body, he puts in the scripture. We got to be careful, but be, because just because has God has not gotten us does not mean that he's not going to. God will remove the hedge just a little bit so that pressure and pain can come that will cause us to get back in line with God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, lift your hands. Let me put my hand up because some of y'all ain't going to put up nothing. Glory to God. But I'm telling you right now, glory to God. There are times, glory to God, when God will allow certain things to take place in our lives. And it is to bring us back to himself. It is to call us back to holiness, to righteousness, to what God requires of us. Can I talk to somebody? It is critical for us, saints of God, Critical. He says, don't fling away your confidence. It's just because you're going through difficulty, just because you're dealing with tough things, just because you're being challenged in your walk. Don't give up on God. Your finances got bad and your relationship fall apart. And somebody talked bad about you in the church and two or three folks that was your friend no longer uh, act like they're your friends. And maybe even they have walked away from you. Glory to God. Don't give up on God. Those things happen. They come to challenge your faith. Glory to God. Sometimes God allows those things. In fact, God has to allow it to happen because the devil couldn't do it if God didn't allow it. But God never allows that to happen to you so that it destroys you. He loves you too much. Amen? By our by our way and not, excuse me, let me go. And if he draws back, if that person draws back, shrinks in fear he says my soul shall have no delight in him but our way is not that of those who shrink back into destruction but we are somebody put in the chat box i am i am i am put it in there i am but we are of those who believe relying on god through faith in jesus christ the messiah and by his confident faith preserve the soul we are those who have confidence in God to the saving of our souls. We hold on to God. And somebody said it the other day. We trust his hand. We, can't, we trust his heart when we can't trace it. Glory to God. We trust him when we can't trace him. Glory to God. When we don't know where he is, but we trust him. We trust him because that's the God we serve. We trust him. I don't, God, I don't know what's going on. If you was honest, you'd say, God, I, there are times that things are going on in my life and I really don't know where we're going here. I don't know where this came from. Glory to God. But I trust you. I know you got me in your hand. Is there anybody that you know God's got you in his hand? Glory to God. You know. Glory to God. And, and God's got you in his hand. Glory to God. Even when we mess up. Even glory to God. I'm, I'm talking about since you've been saved, you messed up. I'm talking to somebody here today. Glory to God. I, I, this, this Zoom thing, you got to know what you're talking about because you ain't going to get a whole lot of amen. You can't hit nothing. But I'm just telling you right now, 
since we've been saved, we have stumbled and fallen and sometimes intentionally done wrong, but God still got you. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. The grace of God that was extended to us word. Glory to God. That even when I was, glory to God, saved and I, I called on the name of the Lord as my Lord and Savior and I got tricked and I got tripped up by the enemy. God still held me up so that even a righteous man falls seven times but get back up again. Glory to God. Even though we fall, we shall not utterly be cast down because we belong to God. Somebody ought to be putting some hands of praise up right about now. Even when I'm I'm sorry, I'm getting real excited here. But even when I struggle and fall, God does not cast me out, but rather he hurt, helps me and he, and, he, and he loves on me. And he dusts me off. He tells me I'm his own. Glory to God. Glory to God. Eh, what did I tell you all that long? There's going to be an inevitable challenge to your faith. Faith that is never tested <laughs> cannot be trusted. <laughs> Faith that is never tested can't be trusted. How you know what you stand in God if you've never been tested? You've heard some folk talk about, glory to God, yeah, I would never do that. I would never do that. Yeah, but you haven't gotten there yet. Just wait till you, you make the left turn and you find it staring you in the face. Glory to God. If you have not, if your faith has not been tested in particular areas, you don't know whether you'd stand or not. Glory to God. If you was facing bankruptcy, glory to God, and foreclosure, and and, and glory to God, somebody dropped a wallet and, and you picked it up, $2,000 sitting in the wallet, would you call the name and number on the driver's license? Or would you declare, look what the Lord done blessed me with. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm enjoying this myself. What you going to do, glory to God, when some, oh God, let me get to you this one. What you going to do when somebody come to you and say something crazy to you? They say, how dare they speak to you? Well, I mean, they just. They just say something, glory to God, and 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 you're saved, and you've been declaring you're saved, and not only saved, but sanctified. And if that wasn't enough, you said saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they said something off to you. Would you go off? They said something off, and you went off. Or would you be able to, glory to God, Hold yourself, glory to God, in the hand of the Lord. Let the faith that you have in God, let this Holy Ghost that you feel with give you comfort in the difficult hour of being ridiculed, especially publicly. How would you deal with this? Would you respond maturely? Glory to God. Do you have confidence that you would respond maturely? Or do, are you practicing now so that when it happens, glory to God, you can you can get them back. Glory to God. Boy, if this, listen, if it had been five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to. I would have. Yeah. Yeah. A few days ago, I, it would be on. Glory to God. It, it, well, you, all you're doing is setting yourself up. Glory to God. Because when you do that, remember, we sent something into the atmosphere. Now, the devil does not know what you're going to do. But if you just said that, here he comes. Because he's going to test that. Because you just spoke a sensitive area of your life. You put it out there. Can I talk to some of you? I'm, 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 I'm trying to get us to understand, glory to God, that if you have not had a faith that has been tested, how do you know what you could handle? And yes, glory to God. Give your faith a chance to show you how powerful it is. Not to show other folks, to show you how powerful your faith is. In God. Don't run away because of disagreements in the church. 
discard your family or important relationship because of testing or opposition or frustration. You know, uh, I got to go because, glory to God, there are people here that, uh, you know, they not say they're supposed to be saved and, and they said stuff and, and you know, they hurt, hurt my feelings and glory to God. I can't believe sister so-and-so, she a missionary. I can't, I can't believe that the elders don't do this. And I can't believe the pastor, woo, I can't believe the pastor said that when he was preaching, glory to God. Where is your faith in God? Let me just tell you, I, I'm, 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 I serve as your pastor, but I'm not your God. You have a God. <laughs> you have a God and you have the Holy Ghost and you've got to be able to stand on God's word. And when difficult situations come and you're, you're visible to that situation, you're around that situation, that might be the time when you ought to stand up in your maturity. When you, when God is counting on you to represent him in difficult places. Can I talk to somebody now? God's counting on you. Yeah, but they've been saved longer than me. I understand, but God's counting on you. Those folks that were with Jesus, I'm talking about those disciples that were with Jesus. They walked with the Lord before he got out of there. And later on, when Jesus was well in heaven, here come Paul. Paul didn't walk with God. He, had, he hadn't been walking with the Lord. He didn't serve the Lord longer than Peter, James, or John. James, his brother, didn't believe him. Didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah until after he had died. But James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And Paul became the most prolific writer of the gospels in the Bible. So time does not necessarily equal spiritual maturity, development in God. There's some folks that have been in the church a long time and haven't moved very far. Can I talk to somebody? And it's important for us to understand that when we get to that place, we need to, first of all, we need to not only continue to grow in God. We need to continue to seek the Lord and study his word and develop who we are in God. But we also need to recognize that the Holy Ghost is in us and he's counting on us to represent him. Not ourselves. He's counting on us to represent him. So when you cuss, <laughs> when you cuss him out, who you represent? When you talk about whooping him, who you represent? When you decide that you are going to appropriate some money that doesn't belong to you, who you represent? When you tell a lie and you don't correct it, first of all, when you tell a lie, who you represent and you don't correct it, who you represent. Faith like, is never tested, not be trusted. When you have situations in your church, I'm, I just want to stop here for a second. I went back a little bit because that kind of the Holy Ghost began to deal with me. On it. Listen, people of God, you got to understand that your church is a church full of people who are trying to get it right with God prayerfully. They're trying to go, grow in God. Amen. They're trying to grow in God. They're trying to develop a closer and more intimate relationship with God. And, and we grow and develop at different stages and in different areas of our life. Am I talking to anybody? We develop at different areas. So I might develop over here before I develop over here. So my kindness might be stronger, glory to God, than my, my, my strength, the strength of my faith. So what we have to do is develop these 
the the gifts of the spirit those where we have the spirit and there are ingredients that come along glory to god in that and so as we're developing those some might be more developed than others but i can't uh stop doing what god called me to do because you haven't developed the way i think you ought to develop I just want, is there anybody that would have anything they'd want to share right about now? I got a lot of, uh, there's a, some a lot in the chat, but glory to God. Is there anybody that wants to share anything as we begin to move forward? Because this assignment is going to require each of you, glory to God, to, to, to get involved in this study. It's going to require you to, to get involved in this study. Amen. Glory to God. We're talking about faith. Somebody put in the chat box, developing my faith. Put in the chat box. Developing my faith. Glory to God. I want you to do it. Developing my faith. Let me look at it. Glory to God. Somebody put in there, how do you know? What was that? What was that uh, in relationship to uh, Missionary Hunter? What was that? Developing my faith. Glory to God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Developing my faith. I'm, I'm growing. it. I'm adding to my faith. Even as we read earlier, I'm adding to my faith. Glory to God. Endurance. Glory to God. Patience. Temperance. Virtue. Glory to God. I'm adding to my faith. Let me get on down here. So faith that is never tested, cannot be trusted. You're going to, you're going to go through some things that test you. And they might, in fact, knock you to your knees. But that's the time you get honest with God and say, Lord, <laughs> this thing woke me out, but I need you to forgive me, strengthen me. Give me strength to be able to deal with it better the next time around. I need to share this with you, people of God. Some of the things we keep going through over and over and over again is because we did not succeed. We did not grow through it. So God allows us to go to it again so we can grow through it. So we can develop. We can be stronger. And you don't get stronger in your walk with God, in your faith for yourself, because others are looking to and counting on you. Yes? And so celebrate the testing. It has maturing qualities. Celebrate the testing. Celebrate the difficulty. Celebrate the struggle. Glory to God. Don't always try and find somebody to be mad at or to blame. But celebrate what's going on. Uh, James, glory to God, writes the Lord's brother. Indeed, we're talking about him. James, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing or trying of your faith produces patience. But let patience have her perfect or perfecting work, maturing work, that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing, lacking nothing. Glory to God. Uh, I see on my screen, I see Brother Clinkscale, Brother Clinkscale play basketball, glory to God. And uh, I, I know that over the years that he's played basketball, he's had a basketball that he went to go and get it and dribbled, but the ball didn't have enough air to bounce back. And so what you've got to understand is sometimes we've got to go back and let patience have her perfecting work. Sometimes we got to say, Lord, help me to bounce back. Help me to have the strength to be able to bounce back. To withstand. The attack of the enemy. Help me to bounce back. And so I put down just a thought that dropped in my mind. Praise 
is medicine for the pain of testing. Praise is medicine for the pain of testing. When you go through whatever you go through, I dare you to go to praising God. <laughs> Just go to giving God glory. I'm trying to tell you, it'll do you better than Tylenol, Motrin, glory to God. It'll do you better than uh, any of those things that you could take. Praise will shift your circumstance. Praise automatically changes the integrity or the structure of whatever you've gone through because praise comes in and it is stronger than that situation. You praise and it just ain't the same no more. You still might be going through it. You still might be dealing with it, but praise changes the way you look at it, changes the way you deal with it. Praise lets you know that whatever it is, God's got you covered. Anybody hear me tonight? Whatever it is, God has you covered. He's going to work you out in your life. I want everybody to put in the chat box, if you will. Glory to God. I want you to put it in there. Glory to God. Growing in my faith. Growing in my faith. Maturing in my walk. Growing in my faith. I just added that. Maturing in my walk. Growing in my faith. Maturing in my walk. That's where I'm going. I'm not going to be stagnant. I'm not going to ever get so settled in this thing. God can grow me up, use me, develop me, empower me, use me at a greater level. Growing in my faith, I'm maturing in my life. What you saw last year, don't go look back there for me because I've matured and grown. And what you see, saw in 2022, glory to God, that's not what you're seeing in 2023. And what you saw, glory to God, uh, on January 1st, that's not what you're seeing on January the 9th. I'm growing in my faith and I'm maturing in my walk. It's developing my walk. I've got a greater confidence. See? I need somebody to go to Ephesians chapter two and read verse eight and nine. Somebody do that. Then I want somebody to put your hands up. And then I want somebody to get Romans chapter one, 16 and 17. How fast, how much time do I have? Glory to God. Go ahead. The ivories, if you'll read Ephesians, somebody else, uh, Sister Bridget is reading. Glory to God. Romans, somebody else read First John five, one through five. Glory to God. Uh, Y'all put your hands up. There you go. Who are that? Brother Solomon, glory to God. All right, go ahead, y'all three. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Through what? Through faith. Uh-huh. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Glory to God. For by grace are you saved through faith. Somebody read, glory to God. Who was reading? Sister me. Bridget, Romans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to every one who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written that the righteous will live by faith. Oh, that's the NIV. I don't know. I have it on my phone. <laughs> One of the things that is here is it talks about we grow from faith to faith. From faith to faith. Glory to God. And so my faith in God brought me through this. And because he brought me through this difficult situation, I have greater confidence that he'll bring me through the next one. Can I talk to somebody? Somebody put the chat box from faith to faith. And so we are saved by grace through faith. And we grow from faith to faith. Amen. I think we had Sister Brother Solomon and then Sister um, Sister Gina was. Uh, go ahead, Brother Solomon. Okay, First John 5, verses 1 to 5. Who's to ever believe 
that Jesus is that Christ is born of God. And everyone that loved him that that God loved him is the that is begun of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, we keep his commandments. For his love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Are not burdensome. But whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is the overcomer the world, but he believeth that he, Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, but whosoever believes that Jesus Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, by this we know that we love the children of God. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Do his word. Somebody put in the chat box, do the word. Live the word. Live the word. Live the word. That's better. Live the word. Live the word. Live the word. Glory to God. Live the word. And his commandments, they're not burdensome. They're hard if you don't want to, if they're difficult, you don't want to live them, glory to God, and you're having struggle with them. But even if you're struggling with them, we grow through the difficulty. When you've, when you've made up your mind that this is where we are, glory to God, you work through it, you grow through it, you develop. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, our faith, our faith. Glory to God. Somebody read Mark 19, 9, I think that's Sister Gina, 9, glory to God, uh, through 14, 9, 14 through 26. Glory to God. Amen. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. And where, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowing foam, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he, he said, of a child. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him. Catch this. Thou, say, say this again. Catch this. What? Jesus said unto him what? Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straightway. The father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Wait, I want when you Jesus to stop right now. The, I want you to stop okay. for a minute. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. I put down, get honest with God. God knows where you are. Glory to God. He knows your struggle. That man got honest. He said, because he, his situation was serious. It was serious. It was an emergency. He needed to be triaged. He said, God, I believe. But help my unbelief. God, I believe you, but there's a part of me that's struggling so that God can, you know, you've gotten honest, but God will fix that thing. So 
glory to God, he can grow you up for the next time around. He said, Father, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. And immediately, go ahead. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he mm -hmm. rebuked the foul spirits, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. But what did the spirit do? And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. I need you to get this. When you stand for God, sometimes, glory to God, the, the enemy does not necessarily stop. You've just got to keep holding on to your faith, holding Amen. on to your trust, holding on to your confidence in God, in spite of the fact that the enemy, glory to God, is continuing to push against you. You've got to believe in what you believe. Amen. Can I talk to five people? Glory to God. You've got to get this. Hold on. Don't let the enemy trick you just because it didn't happen like that. Glory to God. Hold on. God is still there. He's still working it out. He's maturing you. He's causing you to have patience in your deliverance. That's a good one. Patience in your deliverance. Go ahead, Sister <laughs> Sister's Mother's Faith. Sister Mother's, you're reading Matthew 9. Sorry, I was muted. And Jesus, getting into a boat, crossed over the Sea of Galilee and came to Capernaum, his own city. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. They brought to him a man who was paralyzed, lying on a stretcher. Seeing their act of faith springing from confidence in him, Jesus said to the paralytic, Do not be afraid, son. Your sins are forgiven. The penalty is paid, the guilt removed, and you are declared to be in right standing with God. And some of the scribes said to themselves, this man blasphemed by claiming the rights and prerogative, prerogatives, prerogatives of God. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? But which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven and the penalty paid, or to say, get up and walk? Both are possible for God, but both are impossible for man. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority and the power on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. And he got up and went home, healed and forgiven. Listen, glory to God, healing faith, healing faith. Glory to God. Healing faith. Some of us, glory to God, are dealing with some physical ailments and those kind of things going on. But glory to God, God is still able to heal. I said, God is still able to heal. Glory to God. And so we've got to have faith even while glory to God. And somebody say, well, I have faith. I'm not going to take no medicine. Listen, take God has can work through medicine. God can heal us through medicine. God can heal us automatically. And if you look at Jesus's life in the Bible, you saw he healed in a variety of different ways. In one case, he made a mud pie and put it on a man's eyes so he could see. In another case, he told some folks to go walk and show themselves to the priests and they were healed as they went. In another case, he spoke the word and the child was healed at the house. God heals in a whole bunch of different ways because he's God. He can do it in the way he desires to do it, but he always does it for the purpose of his people being strengthened. Listen, I've got to close here. I'm over time. But I put down here some. This is what I want you to do. With those that we just read, I want you to go back over these and put down what the Holy Ghost speaks to you concerning Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. You see what I, I put down in the front top of it by grace through faith. Glory to God. You see what I put there. Glory to God. And you put down what speaks to you. Victor, uh, keep your faith alive. You see what I put down, but you put down what the Holy Ghost gives to you. Victorious faith. See what the Holy Ghost gives to you concerning that scripture. And I want you to do that for each one of them. This is, this is the Holy Ghost. This is study to show yourself approved unto God. So that you're a workman that is not ashamed because you're rightly dividing or properly using the word of God. This is meditating on the Lord day and night so you can make your way prosperous and have good success. 
Glory to God. This is what this is all about, going to the scripture. And then I, if you sit down, down there under healing faith, I put one. That means, glory to God, you put in a title, and then under that, you'll put down a scripture. You'll put down a scripture, and then you'll put down what the Lord says to you concerning that scripture. And there's three of them. Glory to God. There's three of them for you. Not a whole lot. Just three of them. And faith is in the Bible 391 times. You don't have no problem. You won't have to search too hard. Find something that ministered to you by, with, by faith. And recognize, glory to God, that faith is absolutely essential. It's essential. It's not an option. You can or, you know, well, I got faith, but maybe uh, if I need it. No, you you need faith because, glory to God, they that come to God must first believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We read that in our scripture. I put that in there. But you got to first believe that God is God before you even come to God. And you got to believe that God is a rewarder of those who pursue him diligently, who press towards the Lord. He's a rewarder of those who go out of your way. Glory to God. Who go even when it's, glory to God, when it's raining, you go. Glory to God. Who pursue God. Even when folks say funny stuff to you at church, you back next week. <laughs> I'm coming back and I've been praying for him all week long. I've been praying. I ain't been praying that the Lord get him. I've been praying that the Lord bless him. That the Lord strengthen them and encourage them. And when I see him, I say, glory to God. Hallelujah. How you doing? Good to see you. Praise God. That's a nice outfit. Glory to God. I show sure enjoy. Glory to God. You last week, you were praising the Lord. I saw you. Glory to God. That's what we do. When we're growing in God, we don't let those things that the enemy tries to discourage. You know, two things that will mess up the people of God is discouragement. Glory to God. Discouragement and isolation. Discouragement and isolation. We can be so discouraged, glory to God. Folk can say stuff to discourage. And when we get discouraged, we don't many times don't go as hard or as diligently as we need to. And when we get isolated, we don't show up. When we don't get, when we're not connected, we start thinking, glory to God, the enemy starts playing with our mind. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking about everybody, all of us. The enemy starts playing with our minds, glory to God. Discouragement and isolation will mess you up. That's why God said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much more as you see the day approaching, meaning the day that the Lord's coming back. And saints of God, the Lord is going to come back real soon. Everything that's necessary based on the word of God for the Lord to come back has already happened, so he could come back at any time. That's why we need to, ain't nobody got enough to do it all by yourself. We need one another because one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. Pray one for another. God bless you all. Would you give God a praise? I have to stop right there. I ain't through, but I have to stop right there. Glory to God. Come on. Y'all put some hands up and hearts up. Come on, give God a praise right where you are. Come on. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Are there any questions or? Any comments? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. This lesson blessed my soul. Glory to God. As I was, glory to God, going over it, the Lord blessed me and challenged me to move with greater faith. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to move past what other folks say and move with faith and do what God calls you to. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to get your best seed together tonight. Come on, get your seed together. Everybody ought to be sowing a seed. If you can sow $10, do that. If you, the Lord puts on your heart to sow more, do that. Glory to God. Sow your best seed. Without the sacrifice, there's no blessing. Amen? Sacrifice always precedes the blessing. 
God bless all of you. Uh, announcements tonight. Glory to God. I'm looking here. Uh, obviously, our uh, got a good turnout. About 39 devices on. Sister Fuller Bragg, good to see you. Praise God. Um, glory to God. Thank you, uh, Brother Clint Skill. I, I pray that you were blessed by the lesson. Thank you. Glory to God. All right. Um, as we said to everybody, and we've been saying, we're coming close to our, I'm so excited, 25th, our silver anniversary. Glory to God. Silver anniversary. Glory to God. And I'm so grateful to the Lord for getting us to this place. Hey, man, to this place, you don't know how the enemy tried to dis discourage, to divert, glory to God, to detour, glory to God, to destroy the promise that God had for us. Hey, man, but uh, you, you persevered, glory to God, and you encouraged me to persevere, glory to God. So whether you were here 25 years or 22 two years or 17 years or 10 years or five years or two years or two weeks, glory to God, whatever it's been, amen. You, you, glory to God, were necessary when you came. You were necessary for the building of this portion of God's ministry, amen. So we praise God for each one of you, each one of you. Amen. My wife and I, we have the greatest appreciation to the people of God, you the people. Amen. So that service is going to be that uh, banquet is the 21st at four o'clock. I pray that you all, um, um, I pray that um, you all will. Glory to God. Prepare your hearts. I know this. You know, $100 for this kind of a banquet is not at all much. Man, I was looking at one today, one of the programs that I was connected with, and the banquet dinner is $500 a plate, $500 a plate. And they absolutely not doing what we're doing to change people's lives. Glory to God. They're doing wonderful work, don't get me wrong. But the idea is that people are going to do it because they believe in it. Can I talk to someone? They're going to do it because they believe in it. Glory to God. Do you believe in the ministry? Do you believe that God is doing great work? That God is saving souls, encouraging hearts, and maturing his sons? So we ask you, amen, not only you, but bring your friends and family. That's fill up the fill up the room. Glory to God. Fill up the room. Amen. Glory to God. So we're asking each one of you. Prepare your hearts. You can buy tickets online. Uh, I don't know. I don't have the flyer. Do you, do you all have the flyer? I, I'd have to go back and look. I'm not sure who's who's on that has sharing capability. Missionary Hunter or Missionary Burnett. Or uh, Sister Wright. Yes, yeah, lovely Wright. If you can. Uh, Missionary Green, I didn't see you on. I didn't see that. But you can have words, glory to God, and kind of share with him what you were saying in the chat box. Although you might be at work, I'm not sure. Or, uh, Michelle Green, are you able? Okay, you might be able. Okay, so there is a, uh, here you can see the uh, sponsorship levels, glory to God, for our mortgage burning. And again, we're doing this to burn the mortgage within three years. That's our goal, is to burn the mortgage within three years. And we believe that this will happen. This is the vision we've laid out. Glory to God. You can give at these three different levels, uh, 2,500, 1,500, 750. And with each of these levels, you can see some of the, some of the benefits and some of the, um, the gifts that are being given. Glory to God for your sowing into the ministry. Glory to God. And uh, so if you'll do that, uh, we would absolutely appreciate it. And if you can't get there, give your best seed, give your best seed. And so at the final, we ask those that, and you can do this. Uh, you can give 
uh, on, y'all remember layaway? You can do this on the layaway. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, you can do this on the way. Can you raise that up just a little bit so we can see how they can give? Glory to God, or maybe it's on the flyer. There you go. Thank you very much. Glory to God. And uh, there you go. Glory to God. And so if you'll do that, you can give this way with PayPal, Cash App, Givelify. Uh, you can give with Zelle. And you just need to put in mortgage burning or silver anniversary. Glory to God. And we will know. Um, and that money that's being raised is only going to, amen, the mortgage burn. And that's what we're going to do. Glory to God. That means that everybody's still paying their tithes, giving their free will donation, their free will offering. Glory to God. But we're doing this because we have a goal in mind. Amen? We have a goal in mind. All right. Um, is there anything else that... Concerning this that needs to be said, I'm not sure. All right. Um, Y'all making me do all the talking tonight. Uh, the next thing I do want to remind you of is that after that, uh, we're going to be having uh, the NorCal Metropolitan Jurisdiction, our workers meeting. Our workers meeting is going to be taking place in Sacramento at Chowers of Blessings Church. Uh, and that's going to be February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. on Thursday. And I want to encourage all of you all, the, uh, the flyers have gone out with the location, and I think they got that set now, so you can make your room reservations uh, at the hotel that they've got set. And I want to challenge you all to be a part, Solid Rock. Uh, our church is often called to support the jurisdiction our church is often relied on to undergird what's going on, teach classes or, or lead ministries or uh, support ministries. Uh, and I praise God for that. I'm grateful. Somebody said, why are they always calling us? Well, thank God that they think enough of the ministry that you provide, glory to God, that they've called us to support. So Bishop Macklin and his team uh, and Mother, Mother, Mother uh, Gloria Hunt, they absolutely appreciate the work that's going forward. Uh, Missionary Burnett, your hand is up. <coughs> That's what you was going to say, Carl? Yes. No, that no, was Mother, that was Mother <laughs> Pastor. Just a second. Um, 